Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another delicious edition of Texas Oatmeal. Today is going to be a very different video from what I've been putting out. It has nothing to do with the Bander Hall, as fun as that is to film uh, and go to car shows and little events and stuff with it. It has nothing to do with what today's video is about. Today, we're actually going to do a little painting. So, my number one video on YouTube is how to paint an RC car body. So, you know, I, I paint these for a living. I mean, that's what I do. Here's one for a guy. Here's one for a certain YouTuber that I think some of you might recognize the paint scheme from. Uh, well, we're gonna actually paint this one for this guy today as well. Uh, his name is Mark Santa Maria. If you have not found him on YouTube, uh, go look him up. He has blown up over the last year or so. Uh, 60 something thousand subscribers. Amazing. Killing it. He's a friend of mine that, uh, you know, he used to come in my dad's shop for years and years and years and race RC cars. And he started filming stuff on YouTube and uh, now he's he's the man. But I paint most of his bodies for him. So this is the latest one I did for him for the EB48 G 2.0, whatever the heck these are for. I hate these bodies. I think they're hideous, but whatever. I'll paint them. It's fine. Uh, this guy is for a drag slash, I think. Um, it's definitely a drag truck body from Proline. I don't really get into the hobby as much, so I don't follow what these bodies are. It's a 3557 Proline part number. Anyways, so I don't really follow the hobby as much as I used to because I'm not really into it, uh, but I do still paint. I mean, again, that's what I do for a living. Um, YouTube doesn't pay me anything to, to keep posting Vanderhall content and not do something else for a living. So here I am. Anyways, I'm gonna show you how to do a patina paint job on this today. Uh, I've done another video in the past where it's, um, you know, how to literally step by step from unbox the body all the way through finished product, uh, how to mask it off, how to, well, how to prep it, like clean it and prep it and everything, how to mask it off, drawing, cutting, all that stuff. Uh, I've done that in a previous video. I'll link that in the description and I'll put it at the end of this video as well. Um, I'm going to do something a little different on this. He wants it to be a patina paint job. I'll show you the picture right here. So that's what he wants done. Uh, we're going to do that or something similar to that on this body. I've already masked it off. I'm already drawn some lines. You can see where I, my uh, Sharpie walks on me a little bit here. Um, we've already drawn the lines for what we're going to do. We're going to do the white top, the uh, patina, teal, or turquoise paint job. I'm going to do some chrome on the front, uh, and I'm going to detail out the bed and this little, what is probably a fuel cell or something, I don't know, and the straps. Uh, and then there's a wing back here as well. I haven't decided what I'm going to do on it. I might do carbon fiber or something. Uh, I'm going to try to do a wood grain in here. I've never done it before. I tested it on something the other day, and I kind of like it. But at the same time, you're supposed to detail out every one of these ribs with like a little chrome stripe to look like it's the accent piece between the wood slats. I don't know if I'm gonna do all that or not. I haven't really decided, but I need to decide quickly. But mostly this is about the patina paint job and how to do it. Uh, I'll show you step by step on what I'm doing there, or at least how I do my patina paint jobs. This is not necessarily the best way to do it. I'm not sure I know what the best way is um, because I don't, I mean, I don't know. I, I kind, of, kind of figure this stuff out on my own as I go. I don't really get online and do a lot of research. Uh, but what I've done in the past and what I'm going to do today is I'm going to use some salt and some water to make this paint job look all messed up. Now, to do this, I'm going to go ahead and paint uh, all of the other areas that are just solid paint and not going to be like all patina looking. Uh, I'm going to paint those areas first, so like the fuel cell is going to get like a solid color on it. Uh, the chrome is going to get all done, uh, things like that. Um, window trim, things like that are going to get done where they're solid and they don't look uh, weathered at all. And then I'm going to peel out the main part of the body and weather it. I may weather a little bit on uh, the roof as well. Actually, yeah, I'm going to. So I'm going to do both of these parts separately, but same technique on both, and I'll show you how that goes. So here we go.
Okay, so I've got everything painted that needs to be just a solid color. So grill, door handles, little gas fill cap for the original truck, tail light sections are chromed. And I went ahead and detailed all this out. You can see lots of paint on my fingers right now. Um, it's really hard to tell in the video, but you can see there's like a wood grain pattern in there uh, in between all the chrome little stripes, which would be like the little dividers in the real truck bed. Um, this is gonna look probably much better once I peel the overspray film off so that you can actually see everything properly, but you can get the idea right now. So the next step is to do the patina look on everything that's gonna be this like turquoise or teal or whatever. And the way I do that is I take good old fashioned water in a little spray bottle here. And uh, I'm just gonna wet, like mist the inside of this body. I'm gonna do one panel at a time or you know, one side at a time. So I'm gonna do like this whole side here, uh, mist it down. And I'm gonna take some good old sea salt. Uh, pretty much any salt will work. I just happen to have this big old bottle of it that I use. Uh, I'm gonna pour some in my hand and just spread it around in here and let it clump up in certain areas along some of the edges and really be pretty random with it because I don't want it to look like I planned any of it. So I just kind of let it sprinkle in and clump up where it needs to hit it with the water again after uh, I've put some in there and it, uh, it starts to stick together when you put water on there uh, and it will create my natural kind of texture to the patina effect without me physically cutting or masking or anything like that it's going to be more of a natural effect and it ends up looking i think really good uh, now this is something that i think i saw this online somewhere i'm not really sure where i saw it, it as years ago that I, I saw this method being done it was being done to the outside of the body uh, which is great for some things but um, i like to reverse it and do it on the inside so that uh, you know, the paint is still protected. Like if we decided to run a mat uh, clear on the outside of this, great, so be it. But the mat is the only thing that will scratch off. The paint will always be protected on the inside like it should be on an RC car. So I've reversed this technique a little bit. Uh, it's exactly the same idea. Uh, I'm just reversing the colors that get sprayed just like you would with any other paint job. So anyways, I'm gonna throw uh, some water in here. Uh, nothing special. I mean, I literally just let it mist in there with this little hand pump thing. Uh, it doesn't affect any of the paint I've already done because that stuff is cured enough to not worry about getting it wet. I've let all this stuff dry for uh, 30 or 45 minutes or something just to make sure it doesn't uh, mess with it. But just spray some in there. Um, you don't have to worry about it getting like any little water droplets or anything. That kind of adds to the patina effect. Uh, it doesn't hurt anything doing that. Uh, so I'm gonna do this one side, put some salt in here and uh, let it dry a little bit before I move on to the next panel and the next panel and so on and so forth so that it all sticks real well. So again, just pouring some in my hand just because it's easier to control it when it's in my hand versus, you know, uh, pouring it out of the jar itself. Um, but I'm gonna just let it kind of puddle up in here in little certain areas. Um, again, not being super sp specific. Um, I do kind of do a little bit, you know, um, in a row or something or whatever a lot of times in the um, edges of the panels um, but then I also put some just in kind of random spots as I go uh, just to give it uh, you know like some of these bodies they get weathered in certain areas more than others and that's the idea is to kind of you know, the natural places like the bottom corner of the door or something would naturally have uh, a little extra uh, area that would get worn out from the paint chipping off of it or whatever. I try to hit those corners a little bit, maybe more than just being super random with it. Um, but you get the idea. It, there's no science to this. It's just a matter of kind of putting it wherever you want it. Uh, and if if you're not getting real good coverage or it's not sticking exactly where you want it, I mean, just add a little bit more water to that area as you go. So then now that I've put some salt in there, I'm gonna go ahead and spray it just a little bit more. Nothing crazy, just to get this, the kind of loose stuff uh, to stick a little bit more. All of it will stick pretty well. If you get it really, really wet, then you have to deal with letting it dry for much longer than it should take. 
uh, instead of just kind of hitting it real quick. Um, and of course, I'm getting little water droplets on everything, which is not helping uh, me get the effect that I really want, but uh, it can be okay. So yeah, just something like that. You know, again, you don't have to be super perfect with it. Um, I mean, you actually want it to be really random and kind of messed up looking. Uh, you know, just kind of wherever you want it. You just do that to each panel and again, let this dry just a little bit. I mean, just, I mean, I'm talking like a few minutes and then I move on to the next panel. So as I go to pick this up, I'm gonna be real careful not to like bump it because it is still loose in there. I mean, it's just salt with water on it. Um, so I try to be careful and I don't bump the body if I can, uh, you know, and of course, Anywhere that there's a lot of water buildup, it does run inside the body a little bit. You can see here it's literally dripping out. Um, man, it just, when it's all said and done, you don't really ever notice it. It kind of adds to the effect anyways. So I'm going to run this this way, and I'm going to do uh, this the hood section now. So you'll see I've got like a whole bunch of water puddled up in this corner. So when I go to pick this up, instead of it just running everywhere and kind of creating a big mess, uh, I just throw a, a paper towel in here of some kind just to let it soak that up, just so it's not ridiculous. And you see it'll leave the salt behind kind of where you wanted it. Um, but as I've gone around the sides, it's puddled up in that corner. So I just didn't want it to run, when I pick it up, I didn't want it to run all the way through everything that's here, you know, into this back corner. So just hit it with a little rag just to soak up the moisture. All right, so now that all the areas are done, you know, you can see kind of everywhere that I've done that. Uh, I'm gonna let this dry a little bit just so that the water droplets themselves kind of go away. Um, it's not gonna all be super dry when you go to paint it. You actually kind of want it to be a little wet because as I hit the airbrush, um, as I hit all this with the airbrush, it'll kind of naturally uh, flake some of this off and it's gonna give me some different levels and different uh, depth to uh, the way the the color hits it so it actually kind of makes a cool effect there's actually a drip there was actually a drip going down through there but again all that looks okay because it looks like it just the paint got messed up and patinaed and everything over time I'm actually gonna hit that front nose a little bit okay so if you get to this point and you've got it pretty dry if you've got a bunch of little random guys everywhere a lot of times I'll move those into kind of back into the area that you've collected or tried to collect it so there's not quite as many little little beady guys just everywhere um, and you just push around with your fingers um, let it clump back up you'll see that some of this is still really wet um, that's okay that's not gonna hurt anything you actually would prefer that over it being super dry but if you get like some real big puddles of water or like these are really wet right here um, I'll hit those with the rag and dry those up just a little bit. But I'm just getting rid of some of these, like the hundreds of little bitty ones in between. I don't want that many little guys just everywhere. So anyways, you get to this point and you can just take your rag and very lightly, I'm talking like super lightly, dab it in here. As a matter of fact, I did that a little too hard because now they're starting to fall because I'm doing it one-handed. Um, because they're starting to fall off this other side. I don't want that to happen. So again, this can be a little tricky. You just have to be a little careful with it. But again, I, I've never done this where I felt like, oh, it's, you know, oh, now it's messed up. Like I knocked too much off or something and got it everywhere. So at this point, there's a lot of loose ones. Uh, I'll take this whole body and just turn it upside down and let it all fall off. All the really loose stuff fall off. Uh, but again, I'm trying not to like bang the body on anything. I just want some of uh, some of that stuff to fall out of there. Not a ton, just a little bit. So that I've got just the big section still kind of lumped in there where I want it. Okay, now it's time to paint. All right, so for this truck, we're going with like a turquoise, teal color or something. I've already talked to Mark and figured out what he wanted. Um, our pressure's a little high, so I do lower the pressure some. 
uh, for this particular application so that I don't, I'm not like blowing the, the salt out of there too badly. Again, you, it's okay if some of it does. Actually, what I do is I, I put down a real light coat of the color that I'm doing first, which will help kind of stick some of this stuff in there so that it doesn't move around on you too bad. Again, if it moves, it's okay. Like the majority of it's gonna stay where you want it because it's all kind of hardened or whatever. Um, so it's not moving around on me too bad. Little pieces fly off. Again, that's all all right because it just kind of adds to the effect. It gives you like that extra layer that you really want anyways. You want it to look like it was all natural and weathered and happened over time versus you know being sprayed on there at one time anyways so all right so we've got a pretty good little first coat on here i'm gonna hit this with a heat gun and get it all to dry and the second coat can be pretty heavy uh, and then i'll show you how to knock all this out of there um, and what it takes to get it all kind of out of the way so that you can paint your second coat or your second color which will be I'm going to do like a gunmetal actually I'm going to do a little bit of black first uh, and then a gunmetal alright so I threw a little bit of white in there just to keep the teal or turquoise or whatever kind of popping uh, but then I ran my finger around inside here a little bit and knocked some of these other kind of outliers off because I want those to be black so before I do uh, the dark gunmetal in the big areas where the the salt is, I'm hitting just some of this this stuff off with my finger real quick. Just the little bitty pieces, just wherever. Again, nothing precise here. Just whatever you feel like doing, however much you want. Even if you want to get into some of the bigger areas, you can do that. So even if you want to get in the bigger areas, you can hit a little bit of that. Like I hit this one a little bit uh, just so that it it breaks up some of the color you know so i'm just hitting these little sections with my finger just to break up a little bit of it to do some black in there did you know all the way around everywhere so i'm gonna have some black areas just a little bit of it and then uh the bigger gunmetal spots all right so now i got my black in there just you know all the way around just did a real light coat of it because again i mean black covers really well so you don't really need a ton of it on there and I'm just really, really kind of hitting those little bitty places. It's not a main color. So threw the black in there. I'm gonna let this stage dry for a long time. So I'm gonna hit it with the heat gun to get it, you know, pretty dry initially. And I'm gonna set it down in front of my fan over there and let it dry for like an hour or more. Uh, it's really humid today. It's 67% humidity here in the garage. Um, so I'm gonna let this go ahead and dry quite a bit. I'm gonna run some errands, go get lunch, that kind of stuff. Uh, Cause that will, if this is really, really dry, it will be a lot easier to get the salt and stuff out of there. Cause it's not sticking together. It will just kind of fall out better uh, if it's super dry. I mean, it's gonna kind of be stuck together, but definitely easier to get it out if it's dry than if it's got any kind of moisture in it at all. So we're gonna let this dry and come right back to it. Two hours later. So now that this is super cured, um, now you can see this stuff comes off pretty easily, so I'm just going to really go around this whole body and uh, brush all this off. You know, I just do it with my finger. I mean, you can get a, an actual stiff brush maybe too, but um, you don't have to be super careful with it once this paint has cured some. So, uh, I mean, just... All right, you can see what kind of mess this leaves you with. So don't uh, go, don't go brushing that stuff out in your, you know, living room or in your kitchen or something. You know, do it outside or in the garage or somewhere where you've got, you know, some control over the salt that's coming out of here. That's now all this pretty color. So, all right, so this is what we got going here. Now you can see all these clear sections, you know that. You know, still transparent from where the salt was. That's all peeled off of there. And again, it looks pretty raunchy on the backside, as it should. I mean, this should look like it's pretty messed up. That's the whole idea, right? So uh, I've got all that rubbed out of there. 
you can see it doesn't quite look as crazy on the outside so the more salt you put down the bigger the section gets you know uh, so from the inside it actually looks way worse than it is on the outside now some of this is going to look quite a bit different when i throw the paint underneath it but you can see how it's just weathered you know it just gives you that nice weathered look and it doesn't look like you sat there and cut it out with an exacto knife or something because you didn't so it makes it look real natural so all right so now you can see the effect here and how i did it on the top i went ahead and patina the top maybe a little more than i was originally going to but it just looked so cool i mean the contrast between the gray and the white uh really gives it a cool effect so i went a little crazy up there but you can see how much different it looks when you've got a real high contrast color set um you know this metallic turquoise and the metallic gunmetal uh, they're not so contrasting so it doesn't look that different um which that's why i went ahead and added the black section so that there'd be some black stuff you know on it as well but you get the idea and uh this is still gonna look way different when i peel this over spray foam off anyways so we'll get to that in a second i'm gonna let this stuff dry I just set it in front of a fan for uh you know an hour or so and let the the paint that's under here cure a little bit more all right so here it is so the finished product now this is still gloss we may go matte with it i haven't actually talked to mark about it yet i texted him but uh literally just seconds ago so chrome front end got the gray weathered or gray patina got the gray patina on top Got the wood grain in the back. Turn this around. So that's how the wood grain came out in the back with the little chrome stripes. It's just, it really doesn't come through on camera. It actually looks, I think, really nice in real life. But for some reason on camera, it's just not, I don't know. It's not coming through quite as cool looking. So yeah, that's going to be it for today. So I did another one while... I was messing with this one. I'm going to show you all of that right now. I did that one at the same time as this one. Uh, they shared similar colors. Um, I actually finished it before I did marks. Uh, I actually finished it before I finished marks just because it just kind of worked out that way. So anyways, that's two different ways to, or that's two different, two different color schemes that kind of, they've all used exactly the same method. So hopefully this helped you. If it didn't, uh, or if you, if you know a better way to do it, hey, go for it. Uh, I'm no pro when it comes to this that's for sure i've only done it a few times um but it's pretty effective i mean i love it especially the white with the gray contrast i think that looks just, that turned out awesome um but that's gonna be it for today yeah. so we'll see you guys next time peace you must be blinded by the lights we came to shine here watch it look daytime in the night we bring the vibes here we full of life you keep the change keep the change they hate and say we went and change i stay the same you must be blinded by the lights you must be blinded by the lights lights yeah 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 oh yeah 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 oh. hey if there are any uh, Proline executives watching this video this far in do me a favor die cut your dang stickers